Hello and welcome to Ideas in Love, Life and Leadership. And I'm absolutely delighted today to be joined by Anya, I'm going to make sure I get this right, Smanova. That's right. Smanova, I said it right, fantastic. Who um, we met and connected through, I think Chris Booth, didn't we actually? Um, through Chris Charlotte, Booth. actually. Yeah, oh, through Charlotte. Chris and Charlotte. Yeah, so all of those, all of those sort of uh, dots that, that join up, um, and we jumped on a on a call about a month or so ago, and we're talking about what we both did, and there were so many synergies and so much interest in in, in your background and what you're sort of um, specialising in, that I really wanted to get you on to have a chat with us and to share with uh, my network what it is that you do. So, do you want to do just that and tell us a little bit about yourself um, and and what it was that piqued an interest for me? Ah. Uh. Thank you, Rebecca. Great to be here. Well, about me. So now I'm a transformational coach mm -hmm. focusing particularly on women. And I'm a mom of two myself and I am a former lawyer. And nothing like personal experience <laughs> inspires you to make yeah. uh, career leaps and other transitions in life. Yeah, yeah. So mom of two, working as a lawyer, not living in your native country either um, yes. and, and, and working and so when you were when you were doing your lawyer was that in the UK as well you were a lawyer in the UK yes it was I have I have two I have two legal degrees okay <laughs> yeah in Russia and in law so yeah wow that's twice cool. yeah twice higher education both in law <laughs> you would go and then change it all and become a coach yeah. So, so what was the? Because obviously, you're, you, you know, you're working with, within transformation and coaching others in transformation. What what was it that 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 was that transition that you looked at your life and thought, hang on, you know, I, I could do something else and you know, I can transform this. Right. Um, you know, there are. I would I would say the motherhood, becoming a mother. When mm -hmm. I, I was still a lawyer at the time, uh, in a lawyer in private practice in the city of London. And when I became a mom, it really shook my view of the world and the view of myself. Mm -hmm. Looking back, though, I think that was the last of a series of events that happened. Mm -hmm. I went through various transitions. One of them, as you said, I moved from Russia to the UK. Mm -hmm. I changed from being lawyer in one country to then like in a different mindset and different culture and professional culture in the UK. I then went to through transition in my life. I went through bereavement that I didn't expect to happen. I lost my first husband and it was shocking to go through this at the age of 27 and we actually we haven't spoke about it so mm -hmm. it's a bit of a bomb I probably to to throw at you sorry Rebecca mm -hmm. yeah. but it also gave me an amazing perspective on life and I think that shook a lot about my view of what is important really mm -hmm. and it became my source of this energy and the perspective on life of that we need to have this perspective. We need to have a wider view of what our life purpose is and do things that matter. And so when I became a mom, it just crystallized that feeling that I have less time, I suppose, mm -hmm. in my life and in my career. Uh, I really want to do things that matter. And so yeah. it all made wow. sense. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, gosh, what, what, um, what a series of, of transitions, like you say, that, you, that you've gone through, um, you know, over the last few years, you know, moving from, from a very different country and culture, first of all, you know, in, in, um, in a very you know robust industry that is going to be very different in those countries and cultures as well and to, mm. to make that transition and then to have that you know bereavement and and that sh you know that shock at such an early age um uh, you know and as you say that kind of does crash in the whole perspective on life and what it mm. means and how much time we've got i mean that must have been incredibly difficult for you in in a in a country that wasn't your home as well yeah um, and how were you 
because they're big transitions that, that you went through, right? Some by choice and some that, you know, that, that happened. How were you supported in that, in the, in, in the industry, in the careers, in the, com- in the companies that you were working with? In the companies, how were we supported? Um, well, I, there are various things and at different stages, probably different support worked for me. Mm-hmm. And I almost can't separate. Now coaching people through different transitions, I kind of have a more <laughs> bullet point view of things that helped. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, well, working in a corporation helped. I was employ- employed at the time. So there was this stability Mm-hmm. that was helpful and actually one advice I got and you were saying like I went through bereavement for example and I I was on my own mm-hmm. and one advice I got and it worked was not to change other things because it's a mm-hmm. huge change and actually it was easier for me to stay in the UK with my job even without family supports nearby but just to have this stability Um, And it kind of translates into other things that when we're going through a big transition in one facet of our lives, Mm -hmm. that we need to strengthen probably other things to have this stability for change. Mm -hmm. Then obviously family support and friendship support and just talking, just talking Mm -hmm. and letting it out and talking helps organize your thoughts and process emotions and this is one thing I learned actually is that I partly as a lawyer but partly a cultural thing through my life I uh, didn't share much Mm -hmm. thinking probably it's not fair probably other people are not interested or how can they help and now with experience and as a coach I know how important it is to actually process Mm -hmm. those emotions with other people have this empathy and another thing that really helped is when I became a mom and I returned to legal practice um, as a working mom I was lost truly lost and thinking Mm -hmm. what's going on where is me gone I feel I can do more with my life like what I I was not fulfilled and I learned about coaching at that mm-hmm. point yeah. um, because my husband was being coached uh, professionally and I thought mm, that sounds interesting at the time it sounded like a cool thing of giving other people advice <laughs> now I yeah. know this is not this is not about fixing people but it's yeah. a much deeper self-discovery work yeah. and so I hired a coach And I went to train as a coach and that was truly transformational for me. And I think it landed really well with my experience with also being lawyer and there is lots of neuroscience and I like to understand how, why things work. And yeah, and this last support inspired me to actually change my careers for that reason. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. And, um, you know, all, all that experience, as you say, all everything that you've gone through, everything that you've experienced in terms of what support is around for you, learning that, you know, you do need to be able to talk um, through these emotions and, and share them with the right people, um, you know, and have that outlet. Um, and then, you know, preparing you for, you know, when you have children and the, the 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 return to work after having children as you say for most women and, and men in in a different way can be so um ch- challenging but also as you say transformational because their lives has have fundamentally changed when when you become a parent so to just sort of you know put that in a box and then go back to work again mm. it just it just doesn't work like that because so much of our perspective has changed not just our you know lack of sleep and childcare issues and all those sorts of things you know just our the way that we're looking at our life has which is when we have those you know transformational moments um and i think you know for any coach you know when we look back there's always that 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 point at which we're working with someone who's guiding us who's nudging us who's getting us to look inwards who's getting us to to see our own truth that then points us towards actually you know what this is what I could do for other people this this is this is 
what my purpose could be. This is this is what I, you know, that bigger picture that I'm looking for. Um, so so you you reach that stage that you were like, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna change. I'm gonna I'm gonna do something different. And so what's the story after that decision point? What, what's the what's the most recent chapter in this in this uh, story? recent chapter oh i think i have already gone through a couple of chapters since okay. <laughs> since transitioning so, well first of all we had an exciting chapter when i decided to leave law uh, and it was quite a momentum decision but it actually took probably two years in making mm -hmm. it's just all signs were clear i came for a, a promotion conversation like a partnership track with my boss and left this meeting supposedly with good news of I'm on a partnership track thinking mm -hmm. nothing no motivation to actually pursue it and thinking yeah. this is actually so liberating this is mm -hmm. so clear that now is the time uh, to move on yeah. and now looking back it was quite a bold kind of move but it was the right thing for me I'm not saying it's for everyone I resigned um, on Monday and my husband said well it's actually a good point for me to resign too and we took a year off and we spent it on a tropical island of a reunion island near Madagascar just to do something completely different mm -hmm. sounds very extravagant mm -hmm. felt very right thing for us to do again this is another point for me of getting a different perspective on life yeah. meeting people of different culture and their perspective on life so that was a fun chapter. It yeah. was also a rival of our second son. Mm -hmm. It was also me discovering a completely different approach to women's health uh, because I this was my second pregnancy and birth. And mm -hmm. through for various reasons, uh, I only discovered truly what happens with a female body through different life stages. At that point, it was shocking that like, how can, how no one told me about this before, uh, yeah. about pelvic health, about hormonal changes, about mm -hmm. menopause, all these kind of things. And to, like it, and men have kind of their points of um, kind of health. And this experience, uh, I have already, uh, I had become a coach by the time and that experience made me incorporate the health element into my coaching yeah. to a large extent and so kind of that became the second chapter i was coaching with a deep focus on health and how health affects people in how they show up in their work for example but mm -hmm. also about health recoveries mm -hmm. and then I suppose the current chapter is that i went through this amazing journey of health met amazing people in the on the NHS, helped some good changes to help for women's health on the NHS. And now I'm refocusing again on coaching, mm -hmm. helping individual people and helping one individual at a time to go mm -hmm. through change of through the process of self-discovery mm -hmm. to come out empowered, to come to come out knowing, actually having this kind of map and the toolbox to yeah. live a really nourishing life. Mm -hmm. And as a parent, I know how important that is to be happy yourself, to provide for your children, create this truly mm -hmm. nourishing environment for your children and mm -hmm. for your partner, of course. I mean, yeah. certainly yeah. when you are fulfilled, you can also support your partner. In Absolutely, yeah, and everyone around you, whoever's around you, you know, it's something I talk about a lot with, with people. And, and I, I love the, I mean, I love the idea of going and spending a, a year on a, on a desert island. You know, that's something that we will definitely have to um, talk oh, about. Oh, it's not very desert. <laughs> there is a million people there, but yes, it is. A... Yeah, compared to where we are, right? Compared yes. Where we are now. Um, but, but also, you know, I, I love, I love the, you know, they were talked about stories there and the, the different chapters and, you know, the, the you know, going off and, and exploring something different, looking at it from a different perspective, right? You know, um, learning about, um, you know, the, the health elements of it and how they support, you know, the mindset side of it, you know, and how they support transformations and transitions. Um, 
you know, we can become very fixed in our thinking, you know, and, and, and very, um, this is what I'm doing. This is what I know. This is what I'm going to share. And actually by going and doing stuff that enriches our own lives, um, mm. you know, and, and enables us to stop long enough to kind of take it all in and observe it, you know, it's so hard to achieve, but actually when we do, um, you know, it just, it just deepens our understanding and, and then what we can share with others. Um, and I think, you know, anyone coming to work with you on a, on a one-to-one -one basis who's going through a period of transition that they want to change into transformation, right? They want to make it transformational, not just a transition from one thing to another. You know, all that experience that you've had in all those different um, chapters, you know, and, and with hindsight, looking back, what worked, what didn't work, what are the tools, what's the support, um, what was important, what could I see from this side is going to be so um, informative to the people that you're going to be working with as you point them towards their answer right mm. which is which is not necessarily going to be doing what you've done um but it's kind of you know it's giving them some reference points as to um how you've navigated those changes in your life um mm. so that sounds sounds fantastic and um we're going to share all your links and, and 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 website and and all of that that, that people can find you um, if you were if you were speaking to somebody um right now who you you know would be looking to to, to take on a coach what what kind of what kind of things would they be experiencing that you think you could help them with at the moment i was supposed three feelings mm -hmm. one is the feeling of i'm sleepwalking through life it's just black and white mm -hmm. another feeling is there is something more i can do there is something more i can achieve personally self-development and the third one is there a, a particular transition that you are planning to do mm -hmm. that requires preparation whether okay. it's a career change, for example, or, uh, I don't know, country change, big move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think, you know, one point you made that was really interesting was in, in retrospect, looking at those transition stages is, you know, what else is going on around it? Um, you know, in, in terms of planning, you know, we can we can think, right, we're changing one thing, we'll change everything, you know, and is, is that going to serve you best um, at those, those transitional points? Um, so you speak, there, you know, that, that feeling that we've all had at certain times of our lives of just everything's on autopilot, we're, you know, we're not really conscious of what's going on, it's kind of happening to us rather than for us. Um, you know, big transitions that are coming up, um, and that and that feeling of, yeah, there must be more, there must be more to life than this. And you know, we've just gone through a year where, um, you know, a few things have happened is one, um, you know, we've all woken up a little bit to those um, patterns that we'd fallen into that kind of treadmill that we can get mm. onto. So there's quite a lot of people who've kind of taken this time and looked at it and gone, I don't want to go back to how I was before, but I don't quite know what I'm going to do next. So there's those people that have got all of those feelings going on. Um, but also you've got a lot of people out there who, you know, those transitional periods have happened to them, you know, something, something's mm. happened, you know, something's come in and you know, people have, have lost careers or, 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 you know, jobs have disappeared. Um, the things they thought they were going to be doing, you know, disappeared into, in, into the ether with, with so many other things. So, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of people in that, in that period at the moment, isn't there? In that period of change, if you were, if you were talking to them, I mean, you've shared some of your, your insights already, but if you were talking to someone it through your own experience, if you like, rather than as a coach, but through your own experience, um, in life, um, and, and leading your, your life and getting to where you are now, if that's happening to you right now, if you're feeling any of those feelings, what would be the, the, the sort of first step that we would you would be inviting people to take if they're if they're in any you know in any of those situations in moments of this struggle of life change i think what we tend to do is to focus on this on this hard moment of the now mm -hmm. we're currently mm -hmm. at and it can be a big sea or it can be a puddle but we lose the perspective so the first thing I do with my clients is 
we get a perspective. Mm-hmm. We get a perspective of their life. Mm-hmm. We get a perspective of the future, where they want to be in their life. Yeah. And when and suddenly there is like a scale of where are we at and where we need to move. And we work on different maps and ways and uh, compasses mm-hmm. and tools to, mm-hmm. to actually make the journey. Yeah. Getting a perspective. Yeah. I love that. I love that, that, you know, like you say, that it, it can be a sea or it can be actually a, a puddle, but we just, you know, we're too, we're too close to it, aren't we at that stage? And it's too, um, it's too real to us. Mm. To, to be able to really see it as a, as a clear perspective. Um, and I love that idea as a, as a starting point is, okay, let's just, let's just take a look around. Let, let's just, what about if we look at it from over here? What about if we look at it over here? Does it get bigger? Does it get smaller? Mm. What's really in there? I think that's a, a beautiful way of starting to work with someone, um, you know, on, on their journey. So Actually, tra- what, what, what happens is that C is, is, a, big, is a big challenge Mm. But as human beings, we're most worried about the unknown. And actually, yeah. when we know that's a sea, even if it's a big sea, we, we lose the fear because at least we know who is the beast and what we need to... The, yeah. Our logical brain starts to be more valuable to think through yeah. uh, options. Yeah, and I think, you know, perspective as well, as you say, and, and you know, that fear of the unknown... Um, as you say, can be can can be huge, mm. um, you know. And and it, over the last year, we've seen that so many times, haven't we? With people saying, you know, I, I don't know what's going to happen. It's so yeah. that, it's so scary. But the the reality is, when we bring it back into perspective and into the here and now, we never know what's going to happen in the future. Mm. We may have we may have told ourselves the stories. We may believe the predictions for the future. But the reality is, we never do. We never know more than 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 what's ahead of us. So. But being able to get people to come back to that perspective and back to that, okay, let's just look at what's here. Let's look at what's right here. Not this whole great big sea out there that could be anything, but let's just look at what's right here. And I often talk about, you know, the the first next step. Mm. That's, that's all we need to do in the moment is take the first next step. Mm-hmm. And then, then we're somewhere else. And then our perspective can change, which yeah. then might influence the next first step. Um, yeah so I think absolutely. that idea of, of that and it sounds like a beautiful process to start with you just okay let's just let's just get this into perspective um mm-hmm. and again all your experiences you you know that, that you've gone through those transitional stages you've you've had to do that you've had to you know take what could have seemed you know each mm-hmm. of them individually seem like this absolute ocean of uncertainty is just okay let's bring it back to okay that you know you've for example, with the bereavement, you know, you you know, I could I could think about all the things I'm missing in that, you know, the mm. family network not being in my own country. But you know what I have got? I've got an anchor here. You know, I've got my work. I've got my, you know, I'm working with a with a company. I've got security there. Let's start from there. That's the, the you know, the perspective is mm-hmm. I've got an anchor here and I'm safe. So I think your your personal experience is going to shine through as well um, with the people that you work with. Mm. Um, so um, so. As the, these ideas in love, life, and leadership. So, before mm-hmm. we finish up, up today, is is there anything else that that you would like to share from you know your experience um, of of leadership? You know, in, in your in your career, in your life, um, in what you're doing at the moment, what the future holds for you that that you'd like to share as a little a little nugget before mm. we finish up. Oh, thank you. It kind of comes easily to me because we're in the March, in the month of March, mm-hmm. and you and I met on one clubhouse event when we discussed leadership, I think, and I discussed it with some other people. So the perspective that I hold at the moment on leadership is mm-hmm. how is humane leadership is becoming the new cool. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad about this. And, um, and what I mean by humane leadership is leadership that goes beyond the rational and prioritizes, puts people first. And as a mom myself, and as a coach who works a lot with working parents, I see how parenthood offers uh, offers us a platform, an amazing platform 
to hone those skills of leadership because they are about the parenting is about deep listening not necessarily agreeing but empathizing mm. and holding the people in front of you creative and resourceful and helping them grow mm. and I think those skills I would love to more parents and women in particular to see motherhood and parenthood as an amazing career progression mm. platform yeah. uh, Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I absolutely love that, and I and I think you're right. It's it, it's becoming the new cool. You know, we've got a lot of conversations going on around it. Um, you know, we've got a lot of world leaders that we're we're being pointed to as great examples of this more humane way of um, way of leading and and the results that they're getting. Um, and I think you know, it's it's for all of us to talk about that more and to. Um, I was doing a webinar this morning where I was talking about exactly the same thing, you know, about what we believe is leadership and and actually some of the other qualities that we can bring to it. And I think you're right, motherhood, uh, fatherhood, parenthood it is a great place to look for, you know, how do we do that and how do we bring that into what we do in, in, in business, in politics, in, in the world? Um, we tend to separate them a little bit, mm. you know, we, and, and I was, one of the things I was showing this morning was, you know, let's bring all of ourselves to leadership in whatever, you know, yes. size that is. Um, and what can we learn um, from that? And I think that's a beautiful, a beautiful um, reflection to have and perfect for the, for the people that you want to be working with as well, because, you know, leadership starts with ourselves, you know, that, you know, we are the leaders of our own life and, if we can build all those qualities into how we lead ourselves, then naturally that's going to come out and it's going to have an impact and a ripple effect in the world. So we take it into our businesses, we take it into our companies, we take it into our families and our communities. So I think the people that work with you are, are going to be very much enriched, enriched by the experience. Um, so thank you so much for talking to me today. It's been an absolute pleasure. I could talk to you for hours about all of these things yes. and dive into thank them you, in Rob. so much more detail. Um, but if, if anybody wants to talk to you, as I say, all your details will be um, in the comments below. Um, so please, please do get in touch with Anya. If there's anything today that you've heard that piques your interest or you think, ah, oh, yeah, that's how I'm feeling right now then you know this is the lady to come and speak to so um i look forward to talking you again to you again very soon we've got um our clubhouse um that we we both kind of join um Paul's oh, yes. the men where we talk about um another transition stage in in women's lives of, of menopause which again i think both of us could talk for a long time about all the all the things that come up around that so um i'll also put the link to that in the um in the comments as well if anyone wants to come and join us and find out about as i say another another fantastic transition but can be a transformational time of our lives as well so, i think um, that's a splendid name for that event it, a port yeah, without the men although we had one when men joining the call us to we did yes we did yes uh, we did yeah i can't take credit for the name that was angela's uh, brainwave but yes oh, it is. And, and it's a lovely place to yeah to, to to pause and to talk very openly about you know all the things that, that 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 stage in our life throws up for us in the same way as you know becoming a new parent throws up a whole load of things when we're we're going through that stage um there are so many symptoms go going back to what you're talking about about health being so you know important when we look when we're working with this stuff is you know there's some there's there's so many symptoms that we we can experience at that stage it's going to have an impact on our on our lives on our leadership on our businesses um and the more we all talk about it it's a bit like humane leadership the more we have conversations about it the more we talk about it the more we share our experiences mm -hmm again, those ripple effects start going out in the world and we start to see the change that we really want to see. So, um, and it's not yeah. just the women's problem. It's actually, and it's not even a problem. It's a, it's a, it's an interesting topic for everyone to understand, yeah. to understand what your wife is going through and to understand what your team members, female team members yeah. are going through. Yeah. So yeah, very yeah. important to have those yeah really really important and and the numbers you know in terms of the the volume of the workforce that are now women and women of that particular age mm -hmm. you know from a very bottom line perspective 
you need to understand it. You know, it's going to be critical to the success of your business, let alone from the more humane, um, you know, or, or compassionate sense. It's it's going to be so critical to so many businesses out there. So yeah, other conversations that we could, that we could have. We'll have to make this yeah. a series, won't we? And, and talk. Yeah. About oh, I would love to. <laughs> so many topics to discuss. Thank you so much, yeah. Rebecca. What a oh, pleasure my- to be invited. Oh, thank you. It's been lovely to have you here. And um, as I say, um, all your details will be shared. So please, please do get in touch with this uh, wonderful coach. And if, if she can help guide you through a transition or transformation time in your life, um, I think that would be a beautiful experience. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rebecca. <laughs>